How does the auto hold work on the Atto 3? And what's with the regenerative braking? We learn all about this and everything to do with brakes on today's episode. Welcome back to Down Under EV Adventures. So one of my subscribers has asked a couple of times, explain a little bit more about the auto hold system and the, you know, just the braking system in general on the Atto 3 and how it all works. So I'm going to do my best to explain it. I've done a little bit of research and just from what I've been told to by BYD and also went out and did a couple of tests to try and demonstrate it. So without further ado, let's get in and talk all things to do with brakes today on Down Under EV Adventures. So let's start with something very simple and that's the brakes themselves. So the Atto has four wheel disc brakes, which means there's a disc on every wheel and calipers, which, you know, grip that to, to activate the brakes. So you've got discs on every wheel. This is the, of the front here. And this is the rear wheel, so you can see the brake calipers there. Okay, so we're hopping inside the car, and the first thing you need to know about the brakes with the Atto 3 is you need to put your foot on the brake to actually start the car. Okay, the next thing you should learn about the Atto is it's got regenerative braking. So nearly every EV on the market today, I think even most of the plug-in hybrids, is like that actually they have regenerative braking. Now, you can see on my binnacle here, I've got something which says high, and that means my regenerative braking is set to high. Now, the Atto has two settings, high and standard. There's a switch here. I'll go through all these switches in a minute, but this switch here, if you toggle it up, it's high, and if you toggle it down, it's low. And you can see the icon there's got a little sort of electricity icon to help remind you that that's the switch for the regenerative braking so it's on standard here now and I'll just flick it up and it's on high. Now the Atto doesn't have one pedal driving you may have heard the term one pedal driving before well what that is is it's just you don't really need to use the brakes in other words you can set the car so that you can just have the accelerator and when you take your foot off the accelerator it mimics sort of braking now Teslas have it, Polestars have it, quite a few cars have it, uh, it's possibly Tesla that was the first car to introduce it, I'm not quite sure, but anyway, um, the Atto doesn't have it, but just be aware that it does exist on some EVs, and you know, some people like it and some people don't. Now the reason why the Atto doesn't is supposedly I've heard that when they were designing the Atto, they decided just to have the two settings on the car so that it would more mimic a normal car when you drive so an, you know an, a combustion vehicle car and then therefore it would make the transition to driving a bit easier now they probably could introduce it on the Atto at a later date I, I'm sure they could it wouldn't be hard to introduce you know probably a software update could do it but for the time being there's just those two settings now what how does regenerative braking work well it's quite simple all it does is when you Put your foot on the brake or if you take your foot off the accelerator then it reverses the motor and the motor becomes then a generator so instead of the motor using the electrons it reverses it so it then becomes like a generator so you know like a petrol generator that generates electricity you know for if you've got a power blackout or something very similar the motor becomes a generator and then that energy goes back into the battery and then you recoup some of that energy back which is why EVs are a lot more economical when you're in stop-start traffic or around town that's because you're braking a lot more and therefore you're getting some energy back and it's one but not all of the reasons why on a long trip you get worse economy so on a long trip you're doing a lot less braking so you're not getting really much energy back but of course there's other reasons on a long trip why you don't get better economy and probably the major one is you're travelling at a higher speed. But it's beyond the scope of this epi episode, we're, we're just talking about the brakes and regenerative braking. That's what you sort of need to know about regenerative braking on the Atto 3. Now if we move here to the, the controls and the, all the dials and everything like that. Well, the Atto has the parking gear here. 
it has the stop start switch here and it has the park brake here and the other one is the auto hold which is here okay and then you've got your regenerative so they're sort of in the same area now the parking gear I would just think of that like an old-fashioned combustion vehicle an automatic vehicle now when you used to stop an automatic car you would put it into gear park brake and then you'd crank up the old analog if you like or manual handbrake and the manual handbrake was just a cable which would go down into the back of your car and to, to activate the brakes so obviously an electric brake is just the modern version of that so it doesn't have a cable it just sends a electrical electric signal down to the brakes to activate them so I was always taught when I bought the Atto to turn the car off so the car is on at the moment so to turn the car off Put it into park if you haven't already turn the engine off and then flick up the electric park brake okay so now the reason why you're supposed to do that what i was told is that it's not good for the motor if the car's in gear if the car say into drive and you turn off the stop start button it could cause damage to the motor if you were to do that over a long period of time you could potentially damage the motor because you know the motor is sort of partially engaged if you have it in in the, in the drive gear so that's sort of what i was told it, it sort of makes logical sense to me and i just look at it as if you were driving an old-fashioned automatic car well you'd put it into park before you did anything you know to, to put the handbrake on or whatever or to turn the engine off just think of it like that and you won't get into any issues right so the only other thing you need to worry about then is this switch here which is the auto hold so let's go through what the auto hold is now I'm just sitting here without my seatbelt on see the red seatbelt icon is warning me that my seatbelt's not on now you can't drive the car with the auto hold feature on if you don't have your seatbelt on okay so my seatbelt's on now so there's no warning light there about the seatbelt and you'll notice this auto hold light has come on and that's because this um, auto hold feature will actually stay on so in the same way your blind spot can actually stay on even if you turn the car off then the auto hold is the same it will stay on once you've turned it on now I can't drive with this one on if I'm towing a trailer which I do most of the time because this feature here detects my trailer sometimes as a car and it can be pro problematic with setting off warnings but the auto hold I can so what does the auto hold do well what that does is if you if you actually drive with it on and you you're driving and you stop at a place where there's a, a an incline you know or like a hill provided the hill is not too steep then it means the car will stay in this position once you press the the brake then the car will will engage the brakes and they'll engage it from what i've read about it they'll engage it to a similar pressure to what you put on the brake pedal you know as you're coming to a stop so if you only come to a stop very lightly and you, you just put your foot lightly on the brake then that's the extent of of how much pressure is on the brakes to hold you there now most people you know when they come to a stop they, you know they brake pretty firmly i would guess and therefore in most cases that the hold is pretty good you have to be aware this this sort of feature only really works if the hill is not too steep if you've got like a quite an incline yes i would say more than about 10 degrees then it's not going to hold you permanently in that position without you putting your foot on the brake that's the first thing you need to know about it second thing you need to know about it is well where could you use this and and how could it help you well it could help you just with your normal driving around town so where it's sort of relatively flat and just sort of small hills you know so in traffic if you're stopping at traffic lights a lot then leave this on you might as well just leave it on as you're driving and then you know you can take your foot off the brake usually in most cases and you can just have your foot ready to go on the accelerator when you leave and the car shouldn't roll backwards now even if the hill is steep so if it is more than 10 degrees and you know you do have to rest your foot on the brake you know if, if 
there's some issue. It, the auto hold can also help you in that situation. How that would work is sitting there and as you take your foot off the brake to transfer it to the, the um, accelerator pedal, then the car will actually not roll back for one or two seconds. So it will sort of just hold you for that one or two seconds and then it will start to roll back the car. So you can see that could be useful. So back in the old days before we had this feature, quite often you'd have to drive, and you'd, especially if you had a manual, you'd have to actually have the, the handbrake on and then you'd have to ease off, ease off the clutch, put on the accelerator and then take off the handbrake um, before you could actually drive off. So thankfully now with modern cars you've got this feature and then you, you know, in most cases, even if you've got a steep hill, then you can just put it into drive, take your foot off the brake pedal, transfer it to the accelerator and you shouldn't roll back for one or two seconds. It should be enough time for you to transfer your foot on the pedals and therefore to, to drive off. Now, it might be easier if I demonstrate some of this, so I'll go and drive out to a couple of spots and I'll demonstrate what, I'm, what I mean as, as best as I can. Okay, so for my first test, I'm just out of town here. This is just a small incline and you shouldn't roll back here if you've got the auto hold feature on. So let's have a look. Okay, so for my first test, I've turned the auto ho hold off. And you can see I'm at the edge and I do roll back a little bit. Now if I put the auto hold on, I'll just go back and start that again. All right, now the auto hold is on. Now I'll drive up to the edge. Right, now I'll take my foot off the brake and you can see the car is staying there. The car is actually not rolling back. And that's because, well, number one, the auto hold is on and I press the brake quite firmly as I was stopping. And number two, the incline is not that severe. So if the incline was more severe, I would, st I would start to roll back after a couple of seconds, but that's usually enough for you to put your foot on the brake, then take it off, put it on the accelerator. You can see it's useful in both situations, whether it's a steep incline or not a steep incline. Now I'm coming out to a, uh, a spot here and what we'll do is we'll show you what happens is if you're actually parked here. Now the thing to remember is if the hill is a little bit steep, the car might still roll back. Auto hold should work just enough time to, once you've started the car, to, for you to depress the accelerator. And I'll go into the car and explain how that works. Now usually when you take your foot off the accelerator, even if you're in drive, you'll start to roll back. Imagine now that we're parking in this spot. So, park, turn it off. Right now, I'm now I can leave the car. That the electric handbrake is now on and holding the car in position. Now I'm ready to start again. I'll start the car. Now you can see I've I've already got my seatbelt on, so the automatic hold has come on. Now I'm ready to take off. Now this is slightly steeper here, so now I'll put it into drive. I'll take my foot off the brake pedal now it's holding it and now it's starting to roll back so you can see it took a couple of seconds for it to start to roll back so normally what you would do I'll, I'll drive it back up to that position put the electric part brake on everything so normally how you would take off from this spot is you'd be in drive you'd have the part brake off and then what you do is you take your foot, my foot is currently on the brake, you've just started the car, now I would take my foot off the brake, I'll hold it up here so you can see that the car won't roll back for those first, and now I'll start to accelerate. It's a bit gravelly here, so a little bit of real spin, but the car didn't roll backwards, so that's where the auto hold will help you.
So again, here it's not quite as steep here. I'll put it into drive, take that electric pipe brake off, and the auto hold is holding me here on, oh, no, and no, it's starting to just creep back now. It should give you more than enough time though to take your foot off the brake and put it to the accelerator. So I'm ready to head back to town now. It's on this little dirt road out of town. So I could demonstrate that without having to worry about any cars. So I hope that helped and I hope you learned all about the brakes and the auto hold and regenerative braking and so on. And just quickly before I go, I should mention also that the Atto 3, like most modern cars, is equipped with ABS. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System, and that's just a system where the brakes help prevent the car from skidding and locking up. And it does this by applying different pressures to each wheel depending on how fast they turn. Now you can jump online and have a look at all how all that works, but just so you're aware, when you brake, if you need to stop in an emergency, then the car will bypass all the regeneration systems. You might get a little fraction of a second where it starts to generate electricity, but then the car will realize very quickly that you're trying to come to an emergency stop, and then all the pressure will go onto the, the brakes, and the anti-lock braking will then work to bring you to a, a stop very quickly. So just so you're aware, that's also part of the Atto 3. Okay, I think that's more than enough for today. I've got to get back to work. So thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. We'll be back soon with more great stuff on Down Under EV Adventures. So take good care. If you're out driving on dirt roads like I am now at the moment, well, watch out for those big rocks that can suddenly appear. Okay, we'll see you very soon. Bye for now.